Hello and welcome back to lesson 23 of how to draw uh, this the current shield in Crane B model railway. Um, so far we've got the point of the body, the chassis and the bogies drawn. The next thing I'm going to do is going to move on slightly. I'm going to go across to the runner wagon and start creating that. Um, the reason I'm doing this is I'm going to actually go and do a test print of the chassis to see how that looks and then we can come back and make any changes before we start adding the, the jacking points and things like that on um, and we can also at that stage then start to think about how to do the pivots so that as I say the next thing we're going to do is work on the runner here so what we're going to have to do is make sure we jump across to the runner check the radio box and then we can spin the sketch around we can see we've got on the canvases uh, I think it's this one, the side on view. Now one thing we are going to have to do is we'll draw it in this position here because that's fine, the buffers are just touching, that's its normal position. But one thing we will have to think about is the length of the jib because obviously we're not going to be able to run this with the buffers touching, we're going to have to create some sort of separation there. So however much separation we're going to need for the coupling between the chassis of the crane and the one here we're going to have to extend the jib by that so that it still sits in its little mounting point here and is still connected to the uh, body of the crane here okay so the first thing we we'll do is create a plane that the side of the wagon here can sit on so i'm going to do an offset construction plane from this surface on the main chassis i'm going to rotate the, to a top down view We'll turn on this top sketch here and then I'm going to line up It'd be helpful if this went all the way across with me this surface here so in fact if I just create it initially out the way over here and we can move it into place in a second okay so let's open this up yep and create a sketch on that offset plane we just created and we're just going to use the, the rectangle tool Meters and then we'll fix its position so that it doesn't move. Okay, now we'll extrude this just to give us a little bit of body to look at. Eight millimeters. We should now have a new body in here. Yep. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is need to line this up with the body on the drawing. So if we come back into the feature here, we can come back in and we just keep moving this until uh, I've got it pretty much spot on there by the looks of that. This, what you're looking at here, this body looks wider because there's a frame that sits on top of the chassis here. So we're looking at the, the chassis to be our marking position. So yeah, looking at this, I'm pretty happy that left and right position we're looking okay. I'm not worried about this direction, I'm looking at this one, uh, because I know this sketch is going to be slightly out from where this drawing is. So yeah, looking in this corner here, that's lined up pretty much where I want it to be, so I'm happy with that. What I'm going to do is edit that extrusion I'm going to just drag that across so we've got it in the corner here. Let's try 14.1. Oh, that's more than that. Two. Five. 14.25. Okay, so now we've got the, the width correct. Okay, so if we think about this body now, a lot of this is going to be symmetrical. If we look at the, the photos that we've got here, this one's probably better. You've got buffer beam, obviously, each end's the same. You've got these little 
support beams are going to be the same and the V hangers, the, the W lines are all going to be the symmetrical. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create mid planes and then split all this up into four and remove all but one of them so that we're just looking at drawing a quarter of the wagon. So if we turn off the construction planes, that's like yeah, the construction canvases, and then let's use mid plane tool, create mid plane between the two surfaces in that direction, and then another mid plane between that one. So we've now got those two mid planes. We can then split this body up. So initially we'll just split it, split, select the body and then split in the middle. Click on OK. And then you can see we've got two bodies. And then we're going to remove body two. OK, and then I can turn that construction plane off. And then we'll split body again. So select that body, splitting tool being the one that goes down the middle. And again, we're just going to remove let's remove that body there. Okay, so now we've got just a quarter of the wagon to work work with here. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is, you can see the buffer beam sticks out on the end here, so I'm going to just take a little bit out of the sole bar here just to, to give us some relief. So if we create a sketch on the side surface here, and then if we just do a, a rectangle, go from that inside, define the distance from the end. 0.5 millimeters, and then I'm just going to extrude in minus 0.5 millimeters. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is on that bit we've just extruded, I'm going to create an offset. I don't want to change selection, I just want to go offset from top surface end surface, bottom surface, and I want that to be minus 0.5 millimeters. And I'm just going to come in again 0.5 millimeters. Just giving us some relief. Then what I'm going to do is extrude that last bit up to the end there. Okay, so if we look at the photo, on the end bit it is extruded all the way to the very end, but I'm not going to do that because obviously we've only been 0.5mm thick, I don't want to lose the strength and the integrity there, so I think that's a, a reasonable compromise for us to, to take on that. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to look to draw are these supporting frames here. So if we go back into Fusion, turn the canvas back on, they're not on there. Um, what we have got is these rivets here though, and those rivets are on the photo, and you can see the frame sits between those rivets. So if we come back into Fusion, we just draw the frames between these two, that should work okay. So I'll just create two small rectangles in here. Been a little bit slow since the last update. So do one like that. I'm going to do 0.4 millimeters wide, not 0.3 millimeters wide, sorry. And we'll define the distance from there to the end. 12.4. And its height. And then are they coming out level? Yeah, they come out level. So if we just extrude that 
to that front surface. I'll turn the canvas off now, you see what I've done. Okay, and then if we should be able to pattern that, turn the canvas back on so you can see it. Features, click on, oh, no, it's not going to do it because we've come all the way to the end. So we'll have to go faces, that one, and that one, direction sideways, spin around, two of them. And that's not computing. It's probably because it needs this front face as well. Um, so what we could do to make it quick and easy, edit that feature, and we can just extrude that to 0.49. And then because it's not come all the way to the front, we can then change that back to features select that there we go i know it's a bit of a cheat but you're not going to notice 0 0.01 of a millimeter okay so we've got the, the feature selected we're going to come sideways we only want two of them and we'll go yeah 1.2 millimeters click on okay and then we're going to pattern those again so select the pattern and the object direction we're going to bring that the other way, okay, we only want two of them, and I think we're looking about there. So what I'm looking at here is the position, that frame's coming down to there, slightly further that way. But this edge here is level with this hammer and there. So I think I'm going to go with where it is there. Again, you're probably only talking point of a millimetre. It could be that there's slightly different angles on these W, uh, the break lines here. Okay, so that's our four features there. If you wanted to bring these out level now, all you'd have to do is click on the front faces. And then extrude to that front surface. They're now back level. So if we look at this photo here, you can see there's no more of these support braces. It's just the eight of them in total for either side of the W irons. So what I'm going to do on one two next is drawing all the rivets on that we've got in this area here. So again, we'll jump into fusion here. Now you can see that we're not going to be able to get them all in here probably. Um, so what we'll do is probably just draw four, sorry, the eight outer ones. So if we create a sketch on that inner surface, let's have a look, see what we can do initially. So not from three millimeters. We might be able to, but it'll look tight, but we'll, we'll give it a go. So let's define that distance from there to there. Again, not from three, that's looking good. I want to move it ever so slightly to the left here, so 0.5. It's okay. And then we'll extrude this forwards, normal fashion, 0.5, and then fill it off the top edge, 0.5. Okay, so we see we've got four of them, so if we just do pattern those features, direction, for that direction, and two going upwards. Yeah, I think I'm going to be happy with that, like that. Turn, yep. Then we'll just create another surface, another sketch with the three centre ones on. So, same thing. Back to five, there's the midpoint now, will probably look better in the middle there. Over 
to that bit. Okay, so that's those ones drawn. Okay, so the next one we've got five in this area here. Okay, I'm going to probably have a similar issue with not being able to fit them all in, but again, we'll see how we can get on. Create a sketch. Okay, so again, I'm going to put this one on three millimeters. Find its height. Probably 0.3. I don't think I'm going to fit them all in here. I might just do just for ease. Draw the line directly to match it with those. Turn that as a construction line. Now inspect the distance from there to 0.925. Okay, so if we put a circle on there's 0.3. Find the distance on that line is 0.925 divided by 2. That'll put it in the midpoint between them. So now we can extrude those three and turn those into three bits. Okay, yeah, it doesn't match the plan, but if we do it to match the plan, obviously we're going to put on top of this frame. Okay, so if we go back into this sketch here, and then these four, these two here are in line with these ones. So if I draw again a line coming across, so turn turn that into a construction line. Not point nine distance between them. The same on this one. Draw a line. Turn line to construction. So that's how I've done those five rivets there. Um, as you can see, the sketch is still visible, so I'm just going to go and turn that off. Give you all the lines there. Okay. Okay, so the next one I'm going to draw is, is the buff on the end here. It looks pretty straightforward. So if we come into Fusion, let's turn off the crane so that we can see what we're looking at here okay and i'm going to turn off the construction sketch there as well 
So start with a. Yep, still got that tick. Start with a sketch on this end here, and it's a, just a rectangle. And snap to the top there. Okay, defining the height. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Already done it. Uh, distance in. If we see, so if we come to look at the top here, we can see that it's. It's position relative to the drawing. So if we rotate on that axis, we keep it in the same relative position. We can define distance from there to there. Moving that to 0.5, I think. Moving that closer. Two five. And then it's width is way too big on that. It's by three, not too big. Two point five is too big. Okay, let's just if we delete that and then just drag this come out of dimension. We can drag it till it lines up. Roughly where we want. It looks roughly in line there. So we can then just define that 2.58. Turn that canvas off. And we can then extrude this forwards a little bit to give a bit of relief. I mean, 0.2 millimeters. Okay, so if we look at the main shack, it just goes all the way to the top, which is good, that makes it nice and easy. So if we create a sketch on that surface, again we're using that center point circle, find the center points. Easy like that, and then extrude, and I'll spin this round, so I can look at the side. See the buff actually looks too big on that sketch. In fact, it looks like what's happened is the thickness of our, our chassis has got a bit too big. Um, but I think I'm just going to have to live with that because of what we've got in the middle here. If we close this up, you'll lose that detail. And then we're only looking. Let's, just, let's have a look. It's only one. What have I got turned on here? Let's finish that sketch. Spin that back around. Our chassis is only 2.25 millimeters. It's not particularly thick either. Um, okay, let's extrude that back out. Yeah. What we can do to compensate for that, if we come into this sketch, edit that sketch, we can just make this diameter smaller. If we bring that down to 1.5 maybe. Oops, lost the center point. Delete lost it right. Let's let's get rid of this. Start again with that. So delete that. Delete that sketch. Let's start again. So create a sketch on that face. Maybe one point eight millimeters will go with. Let's have a look how that extrudes out. Yeah, that looks better. I think that's a compromise we're going to make to get the rigidity in the frame of the chassis here. Okay. So the next thing 
is we need to create a sketch on that surface. I'm going to go 1.2 millimeters. Extrude that. Just make that a little bit bigger actually. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with that instead. Okay. Spin this around. On this face here. Okay, let's draw the buffer face. So again we're creating another sketch here. Center point circle and let's bring that out. Let's go for three millimeters initially. Select all of those and look at how that compares to the drawing when we drag it out. So way too big. If we turn the chassis on for comparison, yeah, we can see we're we're way too big. On that buffer compared. Although they do look bigger, or well, it could be that they're just slightly offset. Hmm. I might just reduce that slightly. Ever so slightly. Let's turn off everything else that we're not looking at. My chassis turned off. And then we'll shampoo off the top edge here. that look so if we get that turned around turn that on okay they're looking more comparable positionally wise they're not far off each other this one could probably do with coming more to the left slightly but if we do that then we'll lose that gap there I think I'm gonna leave it where it is I'm going to leave where it is. Again, you're probably only talking fractions of a millimetre and you're not going to notice that the time it moves left and right lateral movement on the, the chassis is going along the track. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there for today's lesson and then we'll come back and, and work on that again on the next one. Hope you've enjoyed it. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe the video.